Hey there, guys. What's going on? My name is Johnny. The thing that I'm riding is an electric unicycle. Believe it or not, this thing helped me get over alcoholism, helped me deal with depression, and I started this channel so that way I could introduce it to more and more people the way that it was introduced to me. Uh, if you want to help me on my mission, please like, subscribe, and follow. So some of you guys may have seen, or may not have seen if you've been hiding underneath a rock, but InMotion has been dropping video after video of their monstrous P6. I am super duper pumped, completely excited for this wheel. Um, I'm kind of finding out the information as you guys are finding out the information. So I'm going to let you know everything that I know up to this point. And if you know anything that I don't know and you know it to be fact, then put it down in the comments below and we'll all get a much clearer picture about what the P6 is, what they're doing, and what you can expect to receive as a consumer. All right, guys. So stay tuned and uh, let's go ahead and watch this first video that they posted. Um, that is of kind of the in-facility testing and kind of engineering facets. Let's go ahead and put that on. Nope, 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 nope. We're going to put a kibosh to that music right there, sir. Um, but we're going to talk about everything that we see in this video. This is a really awesome video, and there's a lot of really technical insights in here that we can gleam just from watching and seeing kind of what they've shown us here. Um, it all happens really, really quick. So what I've done so we can talk about this is I've pulled a bunch of stills from this video, and uh, I'll go over them each one by one, and we'll kind of talk about um, what it is that I see um, and what that builds into this final product that the P6 is. And uh, I think we've all got to agree that the picture we are seeing painted right now so far is absolutely stunning. Okay, so in the first video that we, or the first slide that we have here, we've got um, an oscilloscope. And it's basically a machine, it's like a super fast camera for electricity. And instead of showing pictures, it shows how electric current moves through the wheel's motor wires millions of a second at a time, right? Um, and the numbers, we can actually get a good zoom in on that. And the, uh, the green line is like uh, an electric push and pull going into the motor. In this test, the push and pull went from about 65 amps pulling back uh, all the way up to 150 amps pushing forward. Um, so it's got a total swing of over 200 amps, which is like a huge amount of juice, okay? So for comparison, a phone charger uses like one, two amps. Um, this wheel is gulping over 100 times that in an instant. Um, the bottom number, about 2.5 microseconds, is like the stopwatch setting. It means that the scope is watching things that happen a million times faster than you can blink. Okay, okay, so what's this mean? Why it matters, right? Um, when you step on a wheel, the motor needs big bursts of energy to keep you balanced and to push you forward. The engineers are checking that the bursts are smooth enough and not too spiky because spikes equal extra heat, equal broken parts. Basically, that thing is like uh, putting a stethoscope on the wheel's electric heartbeat to make sure it's healthy before it ever hits the road. Guys, I really wanted to get this video out to you so much earlier, but I locked myself out of the house on Wednesday and it completely threw everything topsy-turvy, man. So it's like in motion dropped so many more videos, like since they originally dropped their first little testing sort of kind of video, I thought I was gonna have more time, man. So this video is really gonna be super dense, pardon me, but here we go. All right, so obviously we have a laptop with this test software on it, okay? Uh, the engineer, he's looking at a graph on the laptop. Um, this isn't a normal uh, oscilloscope trace. It looks like a fast Fourier transform, an FFT analysis or like a spectrum analysis software. Um, FFTs, uh, they're used to break down complex signals into their frequency components. Basically, what notes or vibrations are present in the system. Um, there's a wheel on a dyno rig it has like a there's like a dyno rig back there and you can see uh, the euc wheel mounted on like a, a test frame running under controlled conditions the rig lets them spin the motor safely indoors while logging data basically the dude on the laptop is listening to the wheel's voice the graph with the red spikes is like a music eq each spike is a different note or vibration the wheel makes when it spins um, engineers check this to make sure that the wheel's song sounds smooth if there's any weird extra notes that means the wheel could be noisy or shaky or just like wasting energy so think about this test like the wheel is singing into a microphone. Uh, the computer shows the notes it's hitting, and if the notes are clean, the ride feels smooth. If there are too many weird notes, that's when you get buzzing, wobbling, or like weird parts wearing out early. 
There's a couple other things I was going to point out from that trailer, but since they've released further videos, it's kind of pointless, to be honest. So, you know, I mean, these things happen to all of us. You got to make the best of a bad situation. Actually, I, I didn't have my wallet on me. I didn't have, you know, my... Uh, <laughs> I didn't have my Mighty Plus on me, if you know what that means. And <laughs> you know what that means. You know, so I had to go my whole day just kind of like no food, no nothing. And, uh, you know, and then I was like, oh, wait, no, I don't. I don't have to do that because I, I work up at this kava bar and make uh, tea and kava, stuff like that. And it was... Um, it was easy for me to grab my tips. So I just grabbed my tips and then I went over to the pizza shop. I got myself some chicken with broccoli, peppers, mushrooms, and some cheese on top. Had to talk to the chef about that. It was pretty cool. He was a nice guy. Um, there was a lady in front of me. Her name was Elise. Elise, she must have been, you know, in her 40s. Uh, politely, uh, in her 40s. <laughs> and uh, she was getting ready to pay for her food. And, you know, I was like, I felt compelled because in my mind, I was like, you know, I'm having a really horrible day. This is just not my day. But I didn't feel compelled to, like, make my ass day somebody else's problem. In fact, I recognized that even though I'm having an ass day, I can still make somebody else's day. So I tried to pay for a food. I did pay for a food. And she was so taken aback that she almost started crying. She was very, very, very emotional about the whole situation. The cashier was emotional about it. I didn't put a camera on the situation. I didn't plan it out. So they were both kind of confused because they expected it to be like a TikTok video or something, which is probably its own statement about our reality today. Just the same. That's why I am not doing the rest of these other parts of that video that I ended up cutting out to try and talk about. Um, you know, because... I just feel like they've covered a lot of ground with the uh, with the videos that they've released, and we're gonna look at those now as well. Okay, guys, let's play some I Spy. First thing I Spy is laser cut Velcro. In 2025, we absolutely need laser cut Velcro for mounting our pads. So front and center, we've got the P6 with some Grizzly pads being mounted on it. Nice street tire there, and in the background, we've got what looks to be a one-wheel tire, crooked as hell. Next up, we're testing ourselves on a dyno, it looks like, and we've got heels raised, so we're trying to accelerate there. The pedals got pedal razors on them. We already saw that. Nice big old motor cable. We've got some Grizzly pads there. Again, front and center with the sink pads, the sink pads, the sink pads. People are loving the sink pads. I'm really excited to see that this thing is being tested on a dyno, though. That means that we can guarantee a certain amount of consistency from the performance. I really love the way that that bumper looks as well, the bumper and the kickstand. Sexy work, guys. We got the dyno putting in work right here. And we've got a microphone right there. So you know this is probably important engineering stuff. Dudes are having fun, love to see it. And right here, we've got a really nice lean. We've had a lean capable like this since like the master though. So that's not super impressive, but it is nice to see the guys having fun and stretching their legs. Coming up, we have a nice stair climbing segment. The stair climbing segment I was really impressed by, so we're gonna put this in slow motion. I can't really find any deviations in the pedals, anything like that, um, or the dipping in the front or back of the wheel, and I do tend to wanna look for that when I'm seeing people going up and down stairs. They're right there on the left, maybe the tiniest bit of a, maybe the tiniest bit of a dip. I don't know if I'm making that up or not, but I do really like the stair performance. However, the suspension travel doesn't look enormous. I can't really tell, guys. So a little trick whenever you see people going up and down stairs, if you see their knees moving a lot, then you know that the suspension is not doing as much as it could be in other situations. Here we've got what looks to be uh, some pedal angle um, monitoring uh, at the slope here. Uh, I would say, you know, for promotion, but it doesn't look like this is promotional footage the way that it's being taken. This is also another refreshing thing to see that they're actually monitoring the thermals during real world use case scenario. We can also see that there's a charging port on the back. We can see that we've got Grizzly pads on this kit as well, aggressively tuned for a hard lean. Uh, and we also see these nice spiked pedals that they've got that they've been uh, using with the last couple of wheels. Um, yeah, man, it looks like they've really done a lot with the wheels. And just as far as real world testing, a lot of variety of terrain, um, a lot of different applications. This right here feels like shots fired from in motion. This is kind of funny. The wheel in the back is, I'm pretty sure the Bagode race. Uh, it's, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the Bagode race. And the gentleman who started off on the race had a really hard time starting. And you can see he's kind of still trying to catch himself uh, through the end of it. Never really had a great start. So it's kind of funny to me that in the promotion for the P6, we do have uh, in motion actively. <laughs> 
<laughs> showing their new uh, range commuter uh, destroying the uh, competitor's racing wheel, which is pretty funny because the P6 is not even the in-motion racing wheel. So, guys, what do you think? Um, I know I am not 100% right. I am nobody's, like, master of information. I did the best with what I had as, as I possibly could and um, trying to bring you as much information as I can. And if you feel like you have anything to add to it, please do so. I really appreciate it. I greatly welcome it, in fact. All in all, I can say that I am terribly excited about the P6. I think that this is going to be a phenomenal wheel. Um, I, I really can't wait to get a hold of it. I think it's going to be tuned for riding, you know, for street riding to uh, no end. Uh, the street tire also lends me to believing that, you know, they're kind of trying to point it at that use case. Additionally, you know, knowing that they're going to be uh, beefing up the V14 and that they're going to be releasing another off-road wheel and that they're going to be, uh, you know, uh, introducing a GT racing wheel, which is going to be absolutely insane. So what a time to be alive as far as EUCs are concerned, guys, right? And the next thing I wanted to talk about... Mikey just posted this video. He had reached out to me about the 50 mile an hour update. I was under the impression that it was gonna require new hardware kitting and uh, I was under a false impression. This is actually going to be a software mod. It's gonna be a firmware update. So guys, I am here to let you know that my absolute favorite wheel of all time, the one caveat that people had really and sincerely about it was the fact that it didn't go 50 miles an hour. And I was happy to go the 43 miles an hour that it was because for me, the InMotion V14 was all about off-road, ripping, romping, and having a damn good time doing that. I can jump off of anything. I can go downstairs. I can go through the woods, go over roots like crazy, beat the damn thing to, to pieces. You know, it if I hit the shell of it against something super duper easy to snap off and replace, I mean, the V14 for me was everything that a wheel should be. By the way, this was hilarious doing this next to the Publix truck. For some reason, it just felt really empowering. I don't know why it felt so empowering, but for me, it was awesome hauling tits next to a public food truck. Why is that, guys? Tell me, why did I feel so empowered? Anyway, customer appreciation. like talk about customer appreciation right like all of these wheels that we buy they are basically end of life i feel like they're end of life by the time we get them by the time we receive them i feel like they're end of life i feel like the manufacturer is no longer excited about it or at least that's how it is with i hate to say it but with bagode it does it feels like they're not excited about the wheel once they deliver the wheel and i think that there's ways that they could rectify that i've asked about it over and over again maybe i'll try to shoot an open letter to them in a form of a video asking them to make their software open source so the community can support them so they can get that sort of support that will really help them in the long run man i just i think that they're leaving too much on the table by not refining their wheels i say that because what do we have right now? We have a wheel that is about two years old. We have a V14 wheel that is right at two years old, getting a nearly 10 mile an hour speed bump, guys. That is customer appreciation. That is saying, you know what, guys? We stand behind your investment. This is not just about us making money. Let that sink in, guys. Has any other company done that? And you might say, oh, well, they had the power reserved the whole time. No, guys, they didn't just have enough data at that point in time to say, OK, we're going to unlock all of this and it's going to be safe. They would rather release safe power than any power at all. And I'm for it. I'm here for it, guys, because I love my rocket, but I'll use this as an example. When I'm past 50 percent battery, you're going to see me looking at this wheel a lot, looking to see if I'm pushing down past two batteries into one. If I'm pushing into one, then I'm going to have to, re you know, uh, regulate my fun. <laughs> I didn't mean to make that rhyme, but you know, that's just what it is. You have to regulate your funds. So I would much rather have a wheel that is completely rock solid at its regulated top speed than unhinged and ready to just zip and kill myself. Because guys, let's face it, sometimes you're having fun, you're having a blast, and you might just hurt yourself. And you might not see the speed, might over push. I would much rather have a safe wheel than a fast ass wheel. 
you know? Because, I mean, 43 miles an hour, I'll be honest, on one wheel is plenty fast. If you want to purchase your own Extreme Bull Rocket, check out the link in the description down below. Next Gen Mobility's got you covered. Alrighty, guys, if I missed anything on the P6, please let me know. I don't want to leave you hanging. Oh, as I was making this video, they did get 81 miles an hour in testing. Dudes, an appreciation and speed on the V14. The P6 is going to the moon. What an emotional time to be alive.